Right, um, up to my usual tricks again. Um, I'm just going to do a service on this transit. It's a 55 plate. Um, for those uh, not in the UK, that's, um, that just means it was uh, made in 2005 from uh, September onwards. So the latter part of 2005. Right, so um, yeah, just the usual suspects. We're just going to do um, the fuel filter. Um, air filter, oil, and oil filter. So uh, pretty straightforward. Um, as I usually do, I like to just warm the engine up. So I'm just going to let the engine run for a bit, get the, en the oil nice and warm, and uh, we'll get it drained then. And uh, we'll have a look what's what. Right. Um, just before I start, I thought. Um, We'll have a quick look at what we've got here. We've got um, all the usual suspects, like I said, uh, oil filter, air filter, oil, everything. But um, I thought it would be worth having a quick look at um, underneath the engine. And um, so I was quite surprised. Uh, out of all the vehicles I've done, it's got one of the smallest um, sump plugs. It's only a 13mm. But uh, to take the oil filter off, it's a... Uh, Great big 36 mil socket, and just by chance I had to have, have that kicking about because the last time I used it was um, I had to especially get it if you've seen any of my other videos to take uh, the wheel hub nut off on a Citroen C3 Picasso. So uh, luckily I got that handy because um, my toolkit hasn't got anything that size. So um, that's to get the oil filter off, the bigger uh, plastic housing on there, and uh, it's only a 13 mil socket to get their um, sump plug off. We'll have a quick look underneath now. There we go. Nothing exciting. Uh, it's all nice and dry there. I quite, it's quite good you can see the rust and everything there because not that rust is good just because um, there's the uh, sump plug and over, can I, am I getting it? Yeah, there's their um, oil filter plug over there. So uh, we'll have a bit of fun and games. The engine's nice and warm now, so I haven't long put a new alternator on there for those with a keen eye. That was a really quite an easy job as well, that was actually. Uh, very straightforward, just a couple nuts there and then tension it up. Um, right, I'll crack on with that. Hey. I thought I'd just quickly show you this. Um, the oil's are uh, pretty much all drained now, and um, there's the sump plug. But um, what was causing me a little bit of concern? See if I can stand it up there and try to focus on it. Um, is this just at the base of the sump plug? Uh, oops! Stay still. I'm trying to sort of. My brain's telling me one thing, and I'm looking through the screen there. There's all sort of, um, I don't know if it's metal or just dirt or sediment. Oops, let me see what I'm doing. Just just all along there. So I'm just going to give that a, a bit of investigation. Perhaps I'll put a magnet on it and see if it uh, pulls towards that because I'd be a bit concerned if it was metal or if it's just dirt. I'm not sure what it is. Um, the vehicle's done about close on 140,000 miles now, but it's all running pretty sweetly and there's no real issue. So I'm just going to have a little investigation on that and um, I shall report back. Well, um, good news, it's no metallic uh, substance on there at all. What it was is uh, the O-ring that goes around the sump plug there has just been a bit chewed up for some reason. So um, I should have probably tried to pick another, perhaps you're supposed to pick up a new o-ring with every change but um, I've got this one which is from a Vauxhall Astra so more, more, a brand new one and they look more or less the same size it's from the actual filter so that might be a possibility just to plonk that in there it should do the trick um, I can't you know it's obviously designed to withstand oil the only difference is this one's a, a little bit, obviously got a smaller hole, but um, that shouldn't really make a difference in my mind. So um, perhaps I'll I'll have a little think about that. 
and uh, make a decision on that. So, yeah, what I was seeing was all that there, and it it looked like it could have been metal, but it's just uh, chewed up rubber there. So that's good news anyway. So it, uh, you don't want to see metal in uh, in your oil, really. That's uh, not a good sign. Right, we'll press on. Right, um, there's the old filter I've just taken out. Absolutely ridiculously tight. Ended up uh, using this giant um, breaker bar there just to get it off. And we got the new one there with the oil o ring. So, with regards to that sump plug, I did uh, decide to go the new, even though it's not a Ford one, it's from a Vauxhall. I, so, there's the old one. I haven't used it. I put the new one back on and it seems fine. So, we're just going to do the filter now. But, um, yeah, just put a new o ring, swap them back, and uh, I won't be putting it on as tight as it was before because uh, that was absolutely ridiculously tight. I needed uh, quite a lot of force to get that off. Right, um, just taking the old filter off, and um, a little note which is worth remembering you, you, just, you just need to push that center bit in when you take the old one off. It pushes down, it's spring loaded, and then the other one just slips off. And uh, something else I just learnt after I took the old one off. Underneath there is an Allen key there to drain the oil out of the filter so you don't make a mess like I did. I uh, spilt it all over my drive. So um, I've never done, you know, I, I just learn as I go along. So that's uh, definitely worth noting. So after you drain the oil, you can also drain the filter as well. On some cars, it's the filter's higher up and it also drains, but on the Ford Transit, uh, it doesn't drain out, so... And it's... I could, I've just read here, it says 25 Newton meters of torque for um, tightening it up. It was definitely a lot tighter than that, so... There's just, there's just no need, you know, if you've got a good oil ring on there, you know, it'll do its job when people over-tighten these things, I don't know why. Because uh, that really was hard work, taking that off. So, um, I'll just slip the other one on. And, um... Those sort of uh, catch bits there, they go on the bottom and uh, I think you should just click in Is that gone in? No, that's it oh, Is it? I think so, do I have to push it in as well? Hmm Am I not being brutal enough? Let's try again Looks like it's gone down all the way as far as it will go. The other one was quite difficult to take out, but um, I think that will do it. It doesn't sort of come out, but it comes out. But the other one needed quite a lot of force to come out. So um, I hope that's okay. All right, go. We'll get that back on then. Right, I'm just going to start filling their um, engine back up with oil. And um, I couldn't find my funnel, funnel so uh, my sponsors, uh, Fanta, have uh, donated uh, this old bottle. And uh, I've just cut the top, the bottom off there, and uh, they're going to use that as a funnel. And um, I'm just going to put five litres in, and then we'll check it. I think it takes about seven, so uh, we'll give that a go. And uh, Something else I did, which is a little bit unconventional, which some people might uh, not agree with. I, I spilt quite a lot of oil on the ground, and as I mopped it up uh, with a cloth, I was wiping some of the excess back on any rusty bits of engine parts, so it's having a bit of protection underneath there as well, so I thought, why not? Something's better than nothing. Right, um, I've just put uh, five litres of oil in and um, checked the level and turned the engine over. Where it's about bang on between minimum and maximum, so I like to keep it sort of bang on maximum. So I'll probably put another couple liters in. Couple liters, am I right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably. Yeah, we'll see. We'll put another couple. Yeah, a couple liters. Yeah, that should, shouldn't be far off. But um, I thought while I'm letting the oil settle a bit more, I'll uh, crack on with the new. Uh, air filter and that goes under there so we'll have a bit of fun I'm not sure if I might have to remove the air 
inlet uh, pipe or not. I think I probably will have to, but just to make uh, make it a bit easier to get in. And um, just one quick little note of uh, just to give you an idea of the environment I'm working in. It's uh, exactly Easter now, and uh, it's we're in the UK. And we've had the unusually very warm weather, so it's been very hot here. So um, I started this job at four in the evening when it was a bit cooler, and. Uh, the, the shade of the house is sort of uh, keeping it a bit cooler for me so uh, unusually uh, in the UK at this time of year it's very hot so I'm enjoying it I'm not complaining but uh, just needed to start a bit later just to make it a bit more comfortable so um, I'll crack on with the air filter if there's anything unusual I'll let you know but I'm pretty sure it's just those few clips on the side of the box there and replace like for like so I wasn't going to show you changing the air filter because it's very straightforward. You just unclip the old box off, and but there's something very unusual going on here. There's the old one in there, and it I don't know, at first glance, it looks like it's it's been soaked with water or something. It's a hell of a shape. I'm going to just whip that out, and that isn't right. I don't know what's going on there. I don't know if it's just Whoever put it in last did a very poor job, but there's an old one in very poor shape, all sort of mangled, and so something very strange is going on there. It looks like water to me, which is a bit concerning. So I'm gonna have a as if it's been soaked in water. So I'm going to have a good look at the air box and examine it's watertight. That is definitely not right. So uh, we'll have a good look in there and see what's what. Because uh, it shouldn't look like that. I've never seen that in my life before. So another little mystery for us. We'll have a look and I'll report back. Well, um, perhaps I can call on the internet to give me a hand here because I can actually see evidence of where there's a little puddle of water right in the bottom there. So water's obviously been getting in there, I don't know how. I don't think there's supposed to be any sort of O-ring around there or anything, but if there is, let me know. But I'm going to play it safe. When I put it all back together, I'm going to just put an additional sort of polythene cover right over the whole lot of it. I don't think it shouldn't do any harm at all, I, I wouldn't have thought so. But um, I couldn't figure out how it would get in there. So, um, a bit of a mystery. So I'm just gonna put the new filter in for now. We've got some, it's been nice and dry recently. And um, I'm gonna put an additional cover over the top of it as well. So, and um, just to let anyone know who's having a go at this, there is a, an additional pipe here, which is for the vents, I'm assuming. That's just got to be pulled out of the way. So, um, yeah, we'll put all that back together, but um, any wise heads out there that might be able to assist me with this, please uh, please message me in the comments. Thanks. Right, um, just taking the old uh, diesel filter off. I was tempted to pour the diesel from this filter into this one. Slightly different sizes, but I don't think that's important. But I'm not sure whether that's a good idea or not. And I'll sort. Of, I'll try to just pump it through with the primer, and hopefully that will fill it up. Because um, air, air lock will be a pain in the you know what. So I don't know if there'll be some contamination if I just poured all of that into there or not. So uh, I think we'll just go for fitting this back in and. Um, I'll let you know how we get on. Just managed to get some dirty oil on my nice new filter. So I'll get that back in and then uh, I'll let you know how I got on then. Right, she's uh, up and running now. And um, I did manage to get an airlock, so I popped up and uh, bought a bit of diesel. And as soon as I um, filled the filter up properly, and I also had to uh, just bleed uh, a couple of the uh, injectors there and uh, she's running nicely now so um, that was uh, servicing a Ford Transit this particular model's uh, um, 
90 T350, just means it's three and a half ton, 90 brake horsepower. So uh, yeah, it seems to be all fine. So I got a bit panicky for a minute because it wouldn't start. But once I filled the filter up, um, it was all fine and I thought play it safe, use, uh, use some fresh diesel as well, rather than the, what was in the filter. But yeah, all good and uh, please, uh, the usual uh, pleading of uh, likes and subscribes. Um, just watching one of my videos there is on about eight and a half thousand now and I've got 100, 100 subscribers so if a few of those uh, eight and a half thousand can subscribe uh, I'll be very very much uh, appreciated. So uh, we're all good and um, I need it for work tomorrow so uh, she's already good for another year and um, We'll catch you up soon on another video.